welcome to M6. I'm Mark McCracken, and today we have Mr. Buckley and Mr. Cowie with us. Thanks for having us. So what happens up here in the booth? What do the students and staff do? So up here in the booth, uh, we control the lights and sounds for the productions here in the auditorium. Uh, right here beside me is our little sound system. I say little. Uh, <laughs> um, and we control the the light switches for the plays, musicals, and all that, and the sound levels for every microphone used in the auditorium. So what do the uh, students get to do up here? Uh, so up here during productions, if they're helping out, uh, they will help monitor the sound as well and make the switches that need to be made. And uh, when it comes to lights, they'll be able to execute the light switches themselves. So it's a very hands-on job, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. So, um, do you need any secondhand knowledge to be able to do any of this stuff? No. Nope. So we we take kids just as they are, whether it's their first time being involved with a theater production or if it's you know they've been doing it for years and stuff with like community theaters and stuff like that, like. Obviously, like if you've been in com arts and have like some of the uh, the background knowledge of microphones and stuff like that, it definitely helps. But it is not a prerequisite to to be involved. Is there any like academic um, benefits to doing this? Will this go on your record or anything like that? No, it's you know it's just a, it's an extracurricular activity. Now it's it looks really good on a resume to say that you've done it, and you know. Saying that you've run lights and sound for a, a theater production is no—it's no small feat. Um, You're—you are in charge of you know the a whole aspect of the quality of a production based on on your uh, personal ability. So, good things to have on a resume. And then, what kind of time commitments are we looking at up here? So, uh, time commits, commitments uh, are are pretty hefty, and they. It increases as the production goes on too. Like you'll be called as as a tech crew member, like in the first week of rehearsals, to just sit and watch the show and like get a feel for how things are going, um, so that you understand the show. So that when you come in and it's your like your time to be involved, you have you know what's going on. Um, so then you might not get called again for like another month or two, depending on the length of the production time. And then once you get called again, it's usually right before Q to Q starts. And Q to Q is kind of like the dedicated tech rehearsal. Pretty much every other rehearsal, they're, they're focused on the actors, the musicians, the like staging, things like that. But Q to Q is for, it's for lights, it's for sound, it's for stage crew getting things set. Uh, and then kind of after that, it's like you're talking like five hours every night for the uh, like two weeks or so. All right. Um, what kind of positions that are up here need to be filled this year? So we have lots of openings for positions, um, some immediate and then some in the future. Uh, some of our immediate openings, uh, we need people to run spotlights. We haven't had people to run spotlights in like three years. Um, and that's, it, it's worked with the productions that we had that we didn't, it didn't really call for spotlights, but uh, as we get ready, gear up for our musical Shrek this year, it's like spotlights are definitely going to be um, a key component of that. So immediately, immediate open, immediate openings on spotlights. Uh, we also, um, sometimes it depends uh, if we have pro projections or not. Um, I, I don't know. Um, what our specific uh, design concept for Shrek will look like, whether or not there will be projections for it or not. But uh, if there is, that's another immediate opening spot. And then our, our sound and light board operators, uh, we have two fine young uh, gentlemen that uh, kind of handle those. And they're both seniors this year. So we're looking to transition that position into like a freshman or sophomore th this year so that uh, they can start apprenticing kind of under our light and soundboard operator so that they get that experience um, without the the stress of having to do their own show by themselves because I know that um, our current light board and soundboard operators they they got thrown in because it was a huge huge changeover um, lots of different things that had uh, started and stopped and stuff like that and so it was very much a a 
brand new clean slate and they had to do that entirely themselves. But this, with this, we're looking to, to kind of ease people into the role. All right. With most of those things covered up here in the booth, we are going to move downstairs to the stage and talk about what goes on down there. We just came from the booth upstairs and now we're out on the stage. So besides uh, what the actors do out here, what can stage crew do? So uh, other positions kind of just in the, in the tech crew that fall under the umbrella of tech crews are our stage crew. And so stage crew um, can be responsible for any number of things. Um, you might be actually moving set pieces, uh, getting those in place. You might be responsible for the organization and handling of props, like making sure that those get um, dispensed to actors as they enter and exit stage. Uh, you might be a, a quick change dresser where you are, are helping actors that have quick costume changes get in and out of those costumes so that they can be right back on stage for their next cue. So a number of, of different roles to be filled uh, in terms of actual on stage backstage crew. Nice. So is it more of on stage learning or is there any pre like classes to take before doing this? No, nope, this is another one. Uh, and this, like Com Arts, wouldn't matter as much with this one. We used to have a performing arts class at the high school here, and that would have been a, a good, good foundational knowledge. Um, again, it was a little bit more geared towards the acting side of things, but um, they were kind of surveyed like the whole of performing arts. So you would spend a little time talking about um, stage crew work and, and some of the things that go into that. And then I know we have the pit here, so is there any difference between what the students will do out here when the pit's open? Um, not really a big difference, no. Uh, the only big exception there is uh, when the pit's open, there's a pit. <laughs> so you have to watch where you're stepping. Uh, but we do have a, like, a safety net in case an accident happens. All right, well now let's move backstage and see what goes on back there. Now what happens behind the big curtains? You know, the famous question, what goes on backstage? So in addition to kind of the, um, the roles we talked about previously, the, um, whether you're moving set pieces or doing uh, costume changes and stuff like that, we do have some additional roles um, backstage crew. One of them that is a, an immediately opening position is uh, operating our ropes. So a lot of the times in the musicals we'll have uh, things overhead. Our, our rigging um, is kind of the next component. And it's so you're responsible for pulling this rope and this is a counterweight rigging system. So every pound that's on one of these bad boys right there is correlates to a pound of weight that is over top of the stage, whether that's a backdrop that's hung, whether that's um, like the mid-stage traveler, the scrim. Um, and if you're running ropes, you're responsible for bringing those in and out safely because you might have to do that during a scene change when there's a bunch of people running on or off stage. Um, and you want to make sure that you can do that without injuring anyone. And so this is a really, a really crucial role and also a very um, big safety concern. But um, we spend a lot of time making sure, especially during that cue to cue rehearsal, that, that the individual that is running rail is kind of the term that we use for it, uh, is, is secure in that and that all of the actors, everybody around knows what's happening. And then in addition to that, our, our other role um, that we're gonna start to look to transition to is our stage manager. So our stage manager is a, is a senior this year and will be graduating. Um, and stage manager is responsible for calling cues. They coordinate all the things that are happening backstage. Um, sometimes they are, they're kind of the saving grace of um, what happens backstage. If something goes wrong, the stage manager is usually the one that's on top of it trying to, trying to correct that problem. Um, now that is a role that you don't apply for. That's something that like Mr. Martin or Mr. Cow or myself might identify an individual that would be a good candidate for that position. But there's, there's a lot of leadership um, and that role is there throughout all of rehearsals. Like they're there for every rehearsal that actors are at. They're, 
the stage managers are is at those rehearsals as well. So besides stage manager, are there any other roles? I see we have like 24 ropes. Do these need to be filled at all times? So the person that's running rail, like it's usually just one person um, that is responsible for the rail um, and all these line sets. Now they're not gonna use all of the line sets for everything. Like some of these are for our orchestra shell and um, some of them are the electrics, which they're fixed during a production. So it's like, Usually one individual can handle the rail and be responsible for that and be fine. Last question. As a uh, football team has their own team charisma and their own special team celebrations going on, is there any team stuff going on back here? Yeah, so backstage crew and tech crew in general, there's a lot of, of fun traditions and stuff like that and little inside jokes that develop throughout the course of the production. Um, it's really exciting this year. Um, like I'll, I'm transitioning out of the uh, role as performing arts center manager, and Mr. Cowie's transitioning in. So it'll be cool to see what uh, what the students, the rapport that develops between Mr. Cowie and the students, and uh, getting to see what things continue and what things you know change, which is an important part of uh, any learning experiences is growth and change. It's really amazing that there's so much going on backstage and around the stage that helps create these plays. Thank you for coming out and talking to me today. I am Mark McCracken for M6, your hometown station.